Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to work with RPCs over the network with Pernet. Now RPCs is known as remote procedure calls and it's essentially what you use to send data over the network or essentially execute methods with possible parameters over the network or on other machines. So first of all, let's just make something like a box in the scene. Oops, I'm just going to make a 3D object, that's going to be a cube and this is going to be my RPC box. This is really just for testing. Now let me zero this and let me just place it somewhere where we can see it, like here. Now let me also go and make a new script and I'm just going to call that RPC box. You can call it exactly what you want. So let me just do it like that and let's add the script onto the box. Now in order to do something easily to visualize what's going on, I'm just going to be changing the color of the material on the box. So I think that's a nice and easy thing to do. Now, first of all, let's make sure that our script is network behavior or network identity, one of the two. And first things first, Let's just go into the update loop. And this is where we'll just be checking for various input. And then let me also just quickly make a private void set color method. That'll take in the type of color, which is the type of color that we'd want it to be. And now in here, what we can do is we can just do something like get the component of the renderer and then get the material and we can do dot color and then we can set that equals to the color. Now, if we just go and test this, let's do if input dot get key down and then let's do key code dot alpha one, then we'll do red and then let's just do a couple more of these. So let's do alpha two, alpha three, alpha four, and then let's do green, let's do blue and let's do black, something like this. So this would be a normal local setup in order to change the color of the box. So let me go out here, let me start it up. And then we also have the client join. And if we then take the client window over here and you can see I press one, two, three, and four, you can see the color of the box changes, but it only does it locally. Same thing on the server would be the case. So you can see nothing is networked now. This is how a local setup would work to change the color of the box. Now let's try and network it. So first of all, and the more, most normal one is the server RPC. What this does is this is essentially from client to server. So if I just quickly note this down to give you an idea, we have the server RPC, which is client to server. We have the up service RPC, which is the server to all clients. And then we have the target RPC, which is the server to uh, target client. This is essentially how it would normally work. And this is how it does in systems like Mira and Fishnet as well, and how you might be familiar with it. The naming could be different, but mind you, this is essentially how it works. Now also one thing really quickly is the up service RPC that we have that goes from server to all clients. That has something to do with the visibility. Now, by default, the visibility will just be that everyone can see it. You can see in the network manager, we have some visibility rules that just says always visible. So everyone can see everything by default. So I would argue if you want to use the visibility or know more about the visibility, go check out the documentation and the specific video on visibility. Now, this is how it would normally work in pretty much all systems. Now, if you use the unsafe network rules, Pernet actually allows you to directly go from client to all clients as well. And same with client to target client. This will also work. So as you can see, the client will essentially be able to do everything if you're using the unsafe network rules or you have your own network rules that allow it. But by other default, more strict setups as you're familiar with, with Mirror, Fishnet, Photon Pond, and Netcode and these other systems, what you would need to do if you want the client to tell something to other clients, you would need to go client to server to server to clients. But let's essentially just start by showcasing this. So now we just made it a server RPC and all, all of them can take in some parameters and it might be a good idea to get an idea of what parameters they can take in. You can see they can take in a channel, whether to run local, and whether ownership is required. And so I'm just gonna say require ownership is false. Now ownership is a whole concept of its own as well and I'll go over that in another video. But essentially it just means if you are the owner of the box, by default require ownership is true. So if you are not the owner of the box, you could actually not call this, it just won't work. But by saying require ownership false, we're essentially saying that everybody can call this server RPC, which we want in our case. So let's go and test this. How this should essentially look now is that the box color should only change on the server, right? So no matter what client we are, we're telling the server to run this code. It's pretty simple and logically, hopefully it makes sense. So let me just go and start this up and start this up here. And now if I go here and I press one, you can see now we told the server, even though I'm on the client, to change the color of the box. So it's as easy as that. Now the client tells the server. And now let's go forward with the Observers RPC setup with the normal strict setup. What you do in that case is you just make another Observers RPC here and I'd call that private void set color and let's just call it underscore observer just for simplicity. I'm just gonna take in the color and now this we move down here and we just call this from inside the server. This is how the setup would normally look 
in most networking systems as well. And of course, you can do this with a strict setup in per net too. Now if we move the client over here, you can see if I press one, it changes on both two, three, four, and now we've synchronized the RPCs like this. Now let me move this back. And now, as I mentioned, in per net, we can actually just remove this server RPC entirely and call the observers RPC directly from the client. And now testing with this, you can see one, two, three, and four, even though, right, this is the client, this over here is the server. You can see the server can do it and the client can do it too. And it's really that easy to call an observers RPC. Now, one thing that's also really good to know with RPCs is that you can actually get information about who called the RPC. So let's just go back and make a server RPC again really quickly. And I'm just gonna call this private void test RPC like this. Um, and what you can actually do with this is you can do RPC info and then info and you can just set that equals to default. And now you have information about the RPC that was being sent. And the reason why this is important because I want to show you the target RPC is that inside this info you can actually also get who is the sender. You can see we get the player ID of who sent the RPC and we're going to be using this. So now let's say that we only want to set the color on the one that uh, sent the RPC. So now let's remake this into a target RPC like this. And I'm just going to call this underscore target. And I'm just going to call this one up here, set color. And we're going to take in the color color like that again. And now we can call it to the target. But for this to be a target RPC, we've got to be able to set who we send it to. And this is why the first parameter here needs to be a player ID. And I can just call this target, for example. And now whatever we populate this with is whoever will the uh, method will be called on. So if I do set color underscore target, and in my case, now I can go for the info.sender and then we can send the color through as well. <clears throat> and now this method should only run on whoever called the server RPC, which essentially would just make it a local setup. So obviously, get me right, this is a bit of a silly setup. Um, but essentially what we're going to be doing now is when I press one, I say, hey, I want to set the color to red. The server then gets in the info and then sends it back to you and say, hey, you can set the color to red and then you will set the color to red. So essentially, we'll just be going back and forth between the client that sent it, but you get the idea. And mind you, you can get the, the um, play ID in many different places. And again, this is more about the ownership stuff, but you can also always just do local player, for example, and then dot value, and then you have your play ID right there as well. That That's your own play ID. Or for that sake, you can also just do the owner, and that'll be the owner of the object. But enough of that. Now let's try and just test that this works. So let me start that, start that. And you can see now that this guy presses one, two, three, and four, his own box changes color, but the data is moving to the server and the server is sending it back specifically to him. And the same thing the server can of course do because he's a client as well. So I really hope that this makes sense. This is the three types of RPCs that we have in Pernet. And it, yeah, going back to this essentially allows you to send a message to the server, a message to all clients, and a message to only target client. So I hope this made sense. Leave a comment if you need help with anything. Also feel free to join the Pernet Discord where we'll be more than happy to help you. And make sure to check out the documentations page if you haven't already. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.